Welcome to Montgomery, Alabama, and Dunn Oliver for Big Monday in the SWAC, Alabama State, and Prairie View A&M as the Panthers try to wrap up the regular season title. Big game for Alabama State. The top eight in the Southwestern Athletic Conference will go to the tournament. So you see the cut line there where Southern is, and you also want to be in that top four, because if you're in the top four, you get a first-round game at home. Welcome you inside. They're about ready to tip it off with Prairie View in the dark uniforms, along with John Thompson the third. I'm Dave Lamont, and John, a lot at stake for this game this evening. Both teams really are playing for a lot. As you said, the Alabama State Hornets are playing to remain in the top four, and that's extremely important in this conference. In Prairie View, they're playing for a chance to win a regular season title, something they haven't done in quite a while. And they've got Texas Southern on their backs right now. That's the only team to have beaten the Prairie View A&M this season. And Texas Southern is the you who's won five in a row, and they control the tap. You've got Pat Adams, Tony Green, and Keith Kimball as the officials. Starting lineup for Prairie View, Andrews, Blackston, Jones, Ellis, and Patterson, their normal starting five. It's senior night for the Hornets, so Lewis Jackson has put Ed Jones in the starting lineup this evening, number 14 in the middle. The first points of the game belong to Gary Blackston, who is himself a senior. Mr. Blackston, currently third in the swag in scoring. He's going to be extremely aggressive tonight. It'll be interesting to see how both teams handle the full court pressure. They both will probably give a little token pressure to try to see if they can speed the other team up. Quick pace of the game in the first minute here. Corner three. And that rebound finally controlled by Alabama State and Jacoby Ross. And Prairie View shut him down. Well, they're going to have to be consistent with that because he's going to keep coming. They're going to have to shut him down all night. Extremely aggressive offensive player, Mr. Ross is. Swack freshman, Swack freshman of the year last year. Good pass underneath. Sweet dish by Patterson. Leading the bucket for Prairie View. Prairie View's really, I, I just said, they're going to focus on Ross and they're going to also focus on number 12, G, and try to make those guys, the catches that they receive hard. Right now, you see Jones denying G all over. The, coming up with a steal right there with the denial. And he'll go all the way, trying to force a foul. Didn't get that, but he does come up with a bucket and a quick start for the Panthers. And a quick whistle by the officials as we have an Alabama State player. That's Reginald G, who's very important for the Hornets. He's shaken up on that play. That is Byron Smith in his second, actually third full season now at Prairie View. And has done extremely well since taking over. He's got things going in the right direction. Obviously, 9-1 last 10 games. Leading the league right now. Took the job midseason a couple of years back on an interim basis and was rightly rewarded the head coaching job and has been a winner. Also was a really good player. There's a bunch of them in this building today wearing suits and ties. We're going to have the first foul of the game as we take a look there at Lewis Jackson, who's in the SWAC Hall of Fame. You see his winning ways. I was going to say Coach Jackson, and we'll get to the others. Coach Jackson might be the best of the former players in the building right now. Fouls on Devontae Patterson, our first of the night. Yeah, we could turn out the lights after the game and bring it back up and have these guys, the coaches, go at it for a second game. Rebound underneath by Pichardo, who was also honored on senior night, and he draws a whistle. You know, Coach Smith talked extensively with his team earlier, but their main key to this game is keeping State, keeping Alabama State off the boards. They, the State does a great job of crashing the boards, and Coach Smith told his team over and over again, we have to win the battle of the boards. We have to win the battle of the boards. We cannot allow them to get second and third shots. And Holston out of the D.C. area, sophomore guard. Pichardo, top of the, not really a three-point threat. And that's 
not going to work for Jones. Pichardo one more time, and he will draw another foul on Prairie View A&M. That's three on them already. Another foul and another offensive rebound for the Hornets. It's good defense right there, but the, the play ends on the rebound when you get possession, not just on the shot. Picardo doing work on the boards, giving his team another shot. Nice slip to the basket right there. Oh, he ran out of room. He got a little bit too far underneath the basket, and that's going to go back to Alabama State. Nice last. execution on that last out-of-bounds play right there. They had everything going. He was and they were rewarding him for all his work on the boards as well, but he ended up losing control. He's got it back one more time on the drive and step out of bounds. Turnover by Alabama State as they seek their first points. You know, when, when, whenever the out of Alabama State players are coming together on screens, Prairie View is switching. Look for the Alabama players to start looking for slips as they come together for screens. Alabama That's State. how Pichardo, I'm sorry, Pichardo got that, that out of bounds, but he slipped in there. They haven't made a shot in the four attempts while Prairie View, three out of four. Another steal by the Hornets. They've got numbers. Well, excellent defense that time. Excellent hustle by Blackston. Great hustle to get back right there. Looked like they had a three-on-one transition break. Alabama State comes up with a nice defensive play. Outstanding hustle right there. Jacoby Ross will try to get things started for Alabama State. Leon Daniels who came in when G was shaken up. Out to Holston and rimmed out. Shooting woes for Alabama State continue. Well, and as I said, Prairie View is going to try to make someone else beat them other than G, other than Holston. They're, they're really denying those guys the ball in the half court and making catches hard for them. We're well, just looking, John, over at the bench. G is sitting down. No trainer is tending to him, so he seems to be all right. He's taking a couple of sips of water. So he looks like he will come back to the game. Hey, trust me, if this scoring drought continues, he's going to come back sooner than later. <laughs> Holston, that's a tough shot. And a rebound controlled there by Andrews. Holston on Blackston. Both of those guys from the DMV area. District Maryland, Virginia, for those who may not know. An area we are both familiar with. We're going to step aside if Alabama State trying to find some offense in a game they really need to win. So Alabama State in a bit of a drought here as we're just, uh, just outside of downtown Montgomery, Alabama, the state capital here. Along with John Thompson III, Dave Lamont, thank you very much for joining us. You know, John Prairie View is in charge of the league at the moment, and we still have, of course, the tournament to play, but they're already being projected into the NCAA tournament brackets. If they get in there, what is their formula to win a game? Well, like you said, if they get in, and Texas Southern and a lot of other teams will have a lot to say about that, but if they get in, you know, they're a veteran team. They're, they're experienced. They're all juniors and seniors. On top of that, they're not going to be overwhelmed athletically. They're not the tallest team, but they're extremely athletic at every position. And then they defend, and they're going to make it hard for others to score. You know, maybe not as difficult as this, Prairie View, as this Alabama State team right now who hasn't gotten on the scoreboard yet, but they're a very good defensive team. And those three factors are important once you get to, if they get to, the NCAA tournament. Yeah, man, that tournament will be in Birmingham, the SWAC tournament, March 15th and 16th. So just to run by again, the top eight will make it. The top four teams will host the first rounds on campus, and then the four remaining teams, and this also works for the women as well, will be going to Birmingham. You'll be able to see that on ESPNU, the men's championship game on the 16th. So at the line, Gary Blackston, senior out of Baltimore. Second team all swack last season. Sixty-four percent free throw shooter made that one look easy. He's a scorer. You know, when they need a bucket, they're gonna come through him. He is their leading scorer at 15.3 per game. 
NCG's back in the game, and they're making it hard for Ross and G to catch the ball. Yeah, they've really extended their defense at times. A little bounce pass on the back door now. An open shot. Haven't seen many of those for the Hornets, and knocking it down is Leon Daniels. All right, the tap's open now. They just needed to get it, to get on the board. Let's see if they can get rolling a little bit. A little pull up that rimmed out. One thing I've noticed, there's about seven or eight guys crashing the boards so far on every shot tonight. Absolutely. Great play right there by G. He's overplayed, so he cuts back to a flash cut to the basket, gathers himself, makes the right pass out for a nice, easy shot. That foul on Gerard Andrews. Well, G in the earlier matchup, won by Prairie View, John, had 10 points. He also had nine assists. And a large part of that is when he penetrates, when he has the ball, they're going to put two and three people in his area. Maybe not three, two. And so someone's going to be open. He's an unselfish player. Have a whistle here. And there is G, a junior out of Houston. Over 1,000 points in his career. And Andrews picks up a second foul. So Jones. Checks out and Toby Iwoshu, Iwoshao, pardon me, comes in. Rebound foul going to go right away against Pichardo. And after a few four trips earlier in the game, Prairie View's done a, a much better job of, of limiting Alabama State to that one shot. As we said earlier, that's, that's key for this game. So much of Alabama State's offense comes off of just throwing it up and going and getting it. So look at 24, Brandon Johnson out of Garfield Heights, Ohio. Both teams starting to go to their benches now. A.J. Farrar not available for Lewis Jackson this evening. He is out injured. Step back. Missed everything. Yeah, and Prairie View is going to have to try to create some offense off of their defense with six shots. Rebound Good. tapped out, and coming out of a crowd is Blackston. He'll go one-on-one. -on -one. Goes to the left hand, and Gary Blackston. Nice move. Just what I was saying, defense creating offense. If they have to come down and try to score every time in the half court, it's going to be difficult. They can do it. They need to create turnovers like that, get out and run and have a little bit of fun. Quick five for Blackston. And G hesitated and got it to go anyway. <laughs> He's a scorer. Averaging just a hair under 14 per game this year. And an excellent three-point shooter at 44%. So we'll watch for that. Oh, slipped it there. Beautifully done. And that's going to count. Devontae Patterson uh, drew the foul. Good read by Patterson right there. His man was jumping out a little too soon on the screen. You see his man hedging too soon. Nice read. Slips right to the basket. Also a good pass by Jones. Johnson hit with his first personal foul. We'll get a look at the junior from Bridgeport, Texas. You know, and this young man, we'll see it as the game goes on. Mr. Patterson is a ball of energy. He's, <laughs> he's all over the place. I mean, practice, he's very vocal, never, he's never quiet. Good team, you know, teammate on defense, in perpetual motion. It's fun to watch. Transfer out of Ranger College. Alabama State struggling still offensively. Two out of 11 so far. G, good pass underneath. Make it three out of 12. As Brandon Johnson, uh, the recipient of a fine dish from G. Nice dish by G. Great catch by, by Johnson also. Dennis Jones, senior guard. Quick on the three. Perfect shot by Darius Williams, a junior out of Augusta, and a 32% three-point shooter. That, that play, that was nice execution right there. The end result was just like Coach drew it up. He didn't have a lot of time to fire that, too. The defense closed on him. Though. No, but he, he knew he was putting it up before he caught it. <laughs> he didn't need much time. He will show there with a bucket. Cutting it to 15-9. to nine. You see Saturday 
He had a solid game. And a loss against Texas Southern. And that Texas Southern team bears watching. No, no, that, that's an understatement. <laughs> I mean, you know, they started off slow as they always do. They've won four of the last five SWAC championships. So yep. they're an extremely talented team. They're balanced. They definitely bear watching. Yeah, they've won nine in a row in conference. Blackston quickly into the front court off the rebound. Again, going to that left hand. The dish, the shot. Count the basket. That's a three-pointer. Antoine Lister is going to have a chance at a four-point play when we come back. Mr. Blackston doing it all, setting up his teammates. Possible four-point play coming. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Voya Financial, helping you to and through retirement. Learn more at Voya.com. Here's a good look at the state capitol, downtown Montgomery, Alabama. And there's our score and time. Alabama State missed their first seven shots. They've made four of the last seven. As you take a look at Gary Blackston, who's been spectacular in the early going. The four-point play opportunity is not made by Lister. Which is unusual. He's normally a very good free throw shooter. Another offensive. Ooh, look out. That's a hard fall taken. Lister gets up quickly. That'll be a foul against the Hornets. You talked about... Blackston, he's playing really well. Wise decisions right there. Penetrates, gets into the paint, kicks it out to Lister. And you see Blackston's excited. He knows he's not only creating for himself, but he's helping his teammates. Well, Brandon Johnson was hit with his second foul. That last foul was on Reginald G. That's his first. So Prairie View is led all the way here on the Alabama State campus. A big Monday. Switch up on the defense here. Yeah, extend the pressure a little bit. Switch to the left hand, and Lister will go back to the line. That'll be on Iwosho. So for Prairie View A&M, a victory tonight, and they are the SWAC regular season champs. They've already wrapped up a first-round playoff game at home. Alabama State. Played very well at home, as you see at eight and two, trying to hang on to that fourth or third position, depending on how things shake out, and get that home game. And a four-five game is never easy, so you're going to draw a tough team. You've got to get them in your building. They both are playing for a lot, and they realize it. That was tabbed and will belong to the Hornets. Both teams going with the full court pressure. It's, it, neither team is overly oppressive, but they just want to see if you make a mistake or if you get careless or there's an opportunity trap, then they'll come after you. That's Austin Rogers has come in for Alabama State. He has it now. Oh, big finish. And the best and the easiest bucket of the night so far for Alabama State as Iwocho comes through. He won't chose, we mentioned his name or not. He's a pretty active player himself. Very good pass right there by Holston setting the whole thing up. He had nine points and six rebounds in the earlier game. Won by Prairie View in Texas. Offensive rebound, little flipper. And Darius Williams gets the bucket. One thing I've noticed, John, is a variety of defenses so far tonight. Both coaches throwing everything they have at each other. Well, it, hey, as, as we said, they're, they're playing for something. They're going to try a little bit of everything. Most of it, though, is, is centered around pressure. They're, they're giving you different kinds of pressure, whether it's the man-to-man, -man, whether it's the press, whether it's the trapping in the half court. But both, most of, both defenses so far center around trying to pressure the other team and taking them out of their sets. An offensive foul called against Alabama State. That's going to be their seventh team foul. And Kevin Holston... The sophomore guard picked up a second foul on that screen. 
you know, now you're talking about switching defenses. Now Alabama State goes to a zone. And left man open at the top of the key. The three-pointer no good. That should be a rebounding foul and is on Devontae Patterson. He doesn't like it, but it's not going to be anything he can do about it. And that's two on Patterson. So that's going to bring Iwan Ellis back into the game. No, and that's why he doesn't like it. He knows he's, <laughs> that's going to end up getting right back on the bench. But I love his energy. I mean, that's a foul he made running around, moving people, trying to get an offensive rebound. You know, he, he's, he, he makes hustle plays. That he gets, that's a hustle foul. So are there fouls that a coach can live with as opposed to some that you can't? Without a doubt. Now, time and score and situations come into play. But if he's going to pick up fouls making the kind of effort that he does, you'll, you'll take it. That's traveling. Violation called on Leon Daniels. And that's turnover number five. Yeah, and that's bad news for Alabama State. Between the turnovers and the second shots, the defensive rebounds that they've given up, offensive rebounds, they, they got to nip that in the bud. You know, they're going to bring the pressure again here on the inbounds. But Prairie View handling it pretty smoothly. Tyshawn Johnson, number one in the game. Step back just inside the three-point line. Bottom of the net for Williams. Williams comes into the game averaging just under nine points a game. He's, he had 15 last game. He's been extremely aggressive tonight. He's feeling it, baby. And that is going to be a block. And that basket did not go in. So that cow will go against the Panthers. We have Duke and Wake Forest tipping off our final regular season Super Tuesday doubleheader at 7 Eastern. Then you get Kentucky and Ole Miss. Both games are on ESPN. And, of course, if you're out and about, the ESPN app is the way to go. That foul will be on Lister, and that is number one on him. And we will be marching to the line. Let's take a look at Bracketology with Joe Lenardi. You got four teams with eight. And then you have the American, the Big East, the Mountain West, and the Pac-12 with a couple. You'll get one out of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And it might be the team you're watching in the dark uniforms tonight. You got that American Conference where Joe Lenardi has four teams right now. Something to look out for. That conference tournament is in Memphis. Mm -hmm. And the Tigers are playing well right now. And they, I believe, are 14-2 and two in that building this year. So they have a shot. And UCF with a gigantic victory over Houston over the weekend. Huge win to go down into the Partita Center. Coach Dawkins' UCF team. Doesn't get any easier because Cincinnati comes to, to Orlando on Thursday. It's going to be point. another good one. Buried in the corner, the three ball by Chancellor Ellis, no good. Alabama State try to get this down to a single-digit deficit, and they manage it. A little flip by Iwosho, and he has been a factor off the bench. He has eight of Alabama State's points so far. He really has, and they're all hustle points. His activity level has been outstanding. Those eight points are consecutive. Right, he's got the last eight points for Alabama State. And this zone has slowed down Prairie View a little bit. Well, Blackston is back in the game after a short rest, and he just grabbed the rebound. And you see Ellis with his second long shot in a row. Ellis, the New Mexico State transfer, is a shooter. And so if they're going to stay in that zone, he's going to stay in the game, and he's going to keep shooting those shots. Now he's 0 for 2. He's got to put one in. And 36% from three, and most of his shots come from there. That is a piece taken away of that shot by Pichardo, and we're going to have a foul there, and that is going to go against Johnson. He got hit in the face. He also got hit with a foul. Owl there, and that is going to go against Johnson. He got hit in the face. He also got hit with a foul.
So John and I have been joined by our officiating crew. They're taking a look to see if they're going to add a flagrant foul here. Remember I mentioned that he got hit in the face, and you can judge for yourselves, and now the officials just taking a good look at it, and they will take a look to see if Iwosho will be hit with the foul here. And they're discussing it just a couple of feet away as to whether or not they're going to make this a flagrant as well. And they're going to tell John here, and John will give us the explanation. They're still deciding. They thought they were going to tell us. Right. <laughs> here we go. Okay. All right, John. If you could translate that for us, please. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said. He said they, they called. They, they called the foul on number one. That'd be Johnson for Prairie View. Johnson for Prairie View. And then they are calling flagrant for the throwing of the elbow on, who is that on? That would, should be on Iwosho. On Iwosho. Simultaneous. Okay, yeah, so reach and foul right there on Johnson. Then the, then the elbow on Iwosho. And then we're going to go to the foul line and shoot the one and one, I believe. That would be right. Yeah, we're still in the single, the one and one bonus at this point. So, it will first be the one-and-one one for Iwosho, who's at eight points coming off the bench tonight for Lewis Jackson and Alabama State. Seventy percent free throw shooter, and it's going to go down just a tiny bit. Now, because he missed that, he doesn't get another one, and we're going to trot the other way for the flagrant one free throws. And it looks like Johnson... We'll get that done. At the end of all of this, Sean, who's going to get the ball? At the end of all of this, Prairie View is going to get the ball. And they'll get it with an even larger lead as Johnson gets on the board for the first time. Their lead has been as large as 13. They have led since we were on the air. So isn't it nice to have a civil conversation with an official for once? Hey, I always <laughs> had civil conversations <laughs> with officials. Especially these three guys. <laughs> well, this is a star-studded crew. It is a star-studded crew. Pat Adams, Tony Green, and Keith Kimball. These guys have called Final Fours. Another offensive rebound by the Panthers. The Hornets are in that zone, and that have, which makes it harder to match up and box out out of that zone. They have to make sure, make sure they did that. They're not shooting nearly as well. Two out of their eight in the last three and a half minutes after a hot start. Here's a rejection by Pichardo. He'll get it back, and he'll be rewarded with a three-point opportunity for Fausto Pichardo. Big fella, way to run the floor. And also, Mr. G, nice dime right there. Throwing the bounce pass through everything. Pichardo stepping up, get, gets the block, and then fills the lane. Post up deep underneath. Mr. G gets it to him. That's how you reward the big man for the defensive effort. You know, it's interesting, John. I, I know you know this, and a lot of our viewers know it, but sometimes basketball heights get fudged a little bit. Charles Barkley was never 6'6". But Pichardo was listed at 6'8", and to me, he looks taller. You know, and that could be a like, kind of reverse strategy. You, you, you put him down smaller than he really is. So the opposition, oh, this guy's only 6'8". Then you walk out there and say, whoa, hey. Well, he does look, to your point, though, he does yeah. look at least 6'9". Or maybe he's still growing since the last time he's well, That's possible, too. I mean, yeah, that's very possible. But something else is he comes up and challenges and got a piece of that shot as well. And fill in the lane again. And he's looking for the again. ball. He's looking for it. Give it to him. He was going to get it. And then yeah, the Hornets will miss the three. Pichardo will get it. I got and it myself. go to the line again. <laughs> Don't give it to me. I'm going to go get it myself. Great effort. Two blocks down there by Pichardo. Fills the lane. Goes after the offensive board. Flies out to the corner right here. That's not a block around. That's a contested jumper right there. They don't give it to him. Hard work. I'm going to get it myself. 
Well, he was honored before the game on senior night. He's out of New York. I think what it is with me, John, but makes him look taller, and everybody get your shot glasses ready. Wingspan. He has it. He does. He's a, he's a long, tall, skinny, playing well young man. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, we talked about the energy that we've seen from the Woe Show coming off the bench. Pichardo from the starting lineup. He's already exceeded his season average of points, which is 4.9. He's got five. No, and we talked about this already, how Coach Smith warned his team about the effort and the energy and the offensive rebounds of Alabama's first front court. Over and back violation committed that time by Dennis Jones, and this is the roughest part of the game so far for Prairie View A&M. That's their fourth turnover. And it's all come just because of energy. This, this Alabama State team is playing harder now all of a sudden. They were in a trance a little bit to start. I don't know what Coach Jackson said to him, but he's got them going now. They're 8 of 13 since missing their first seven shots. Slip the screen. Pichardo one more time. That follow-up does not count. But Pichardo is going to go back to the line again. Senior night, he's fired up, baby. That's going to be two on Ellis. You see, bumped him with the body. Nice pass right there by Ross. Good call by Pichardo. You saw him motion. Yeah, that didn't quite work out. You saw his numbers on the year for free throws. Not the strength of this game. Three points and two rebounds in the matchup in Texas for these teams earlier in the year. Three out of four from the line, and what was a 13-point lead has been whittled down to four. This press back to the zone really slowed Prairie View down. Causing problems. Still causing them problems. And they don't turn it over. There's 17 to shoot. Again, Prairie View with a win tonight wraps up the SWAC regular season title. Alabama State trying to stay in that top four so they can host a first-round tournament game. Pichardo's doing it all. Look at this. He, he's, he's got the, the, the mop from behind the basket. <laughs> I'm going to mop the floor up, too. And now, finally, a young man's going to go ahead and take, uh, take charge of that for him. Hey, when you're feeling it, you're feeling hey, it. Hey, man, I'm, Coach, I'm going to do it all. <laughs> Whatever you need me to do tonight, I'm ready. It's senior night. Well, he and Iwosho, coming off the bench, have scored the last 14 points for Alabama State. And I believe it was eight for Iwosho show and six in a row now for Pichardo. And that could be a problem for Prairie View because Alabama State's big scores in Ross and G haven't gotten loose yet. Shot clock violation, another turnover by Prairie View, and the wheels have actually come off here. Each team with five turnovers, and Byron Smith trying to get his guys refocused. Yeah, they got to figure out this zone. They're having trouble. Since since State's gone to that zone, Prairie View's having a hard time getting, getting points. What's the solution for that? Well, I think they need a little more movement. Their offense is a little stagnant right there. There's movement. And movement to the line for an and one as Dennis Jones sacrificed his body. He had to know he was going to get hit, and it didn't stop him. And, and this is the solution also. Turnover, get out in transition, score before the zone gets a chance to set up. That's going to be two fouls on Pichardo. Seems like there's a lot of guys right now with two fouls. Jones. Alabama State's strength, one of their strengths, advantages in this game is that front court. Hopefully, you know, I'm sure Coach Jackson hopes they all don't get in foul trouble. Three-point play made by Jones, who has struggled from the line, but drilled that one beautifully. And that's going to be an offensive foul on the screen. And if that's Pichardo, that's three. It is Pichardo. And that's three. That is Pichardo, and that's three. That's unfortunate. Take another look at it. You see, they're trying to get, they're running G off a double. 
Yeah, he slide. Pichardo, you see him starting to slide a little bit right there. That's a good call by the officials. Pichardo with no place to hide either. He's right out there right in front of one of our officiating crew and got nailed. So, unfortunately, that'll be the last we see of him. And we'll see now how Alabama State reacts with one of the key players of this half benched for the rest of the half. Three ball. Same team on the rebound. G comes away with it. And Gary Blackston attempting to help the officiating crew. Didn't get the call he wanted. And instead a foul on Prairie View a and m And that's two on him. Yep. Both teams. We've got 514 left. Both teams are in a double bonus. So if either team can kind of put some foul shots. I got a funny feeling the fouls are going to keep coming. These, both these teams are playing. Both are very aggressive, playing hard. They're going, the fouls are going to keep coming, but now the foul shooting has to improve on both ends. We've had 23 fouls whistled so far. Boy, all the way, and there is the 24th foul. Count the bucket. And again, the speed of Gary Blackston has been too much to handle at times. And again, they get down, they score before Alabama State has a chance to set the, to set their zone up. Foul right now on Ed Jones, the senior who got the start tonight. But Alabama State's whole front quarter is, is, is accumulating fouls at a rapid pace. Would you like to guess how many fouls Ed Jones has? I'm going to guess two. <laughs> I can't put one by you. That is absolutely correct, sir. Blackston was seven, make it eight. And so more substitutions. Now the coach is going to have to go deeper in their benches. Fate Williams, number 21, will come in for Prairie View. And again, the Hornets are missing a player they would normally turn to, A.J. Ferrar, who averages almost nine points off the bench. He is unavailable tonight due to injury. Fate Williams, one of the few freshmen, one of the few upperclassmen, underclassmen rather, to get minutes for Prairie View. It's an offensive foul. That's the very definition of a player control foul because the player wasn't in control. More substitutions coming in here. Chancellor Ellis will inbound the ball for the Panthers. First place team in the SWAC. Only one loss. That was to Texas Southern earlier in the year. And Texas Southern's won nine in a row. Prairie View has won five in a row. Just when Alabama State had it going, they had this lead cut to six. Prairie View has pushed back. Well, I mean, Prairie View is 14-1 is and one in conference play. You don't get the 14-1 and one by panicking. They have answers. Two ball missed there. Missed time on the rebound, and Prairie View is going to get it back. Oh, a little fancy pass, and Patterson will get off the Jones assist. Created by second shots. That's going to be a foul, and that's going to be an end one opportunity for Leon Daniels. Once again, we see Mr. G, who's a normally a scorer, being a facilitator. Nice little pass, nice little find right there. Daniels strong with the ball and goes up, but G draws a lot of attention. He's such a scorer, but he's doing a good job of dropping the ball off to his teammates. And Chancellor Ellis hit with his second foul. Earlier, I said he had 10 and 9 assists versus Prairie. He had 9 rebounds in that game, not 9 assists. But he's doing well handing the ball out tonight. Daniels makes the three-point play, and the lead is eight. John, I don't know if I've seen a game all year in person played at such a frantic pace. But that's both of these guys, and they both can slow it down also. But, no, they're getting after it. And that's going to be nearly a steal by Darius Williams. Instead, he will be whistled for a foul. That is only his first. Mr. G, if he can warm up a little bit and start scoring to go along with how he's helping his teammates, State's going to have a chance. with our score and time just a shade under four minutes remaining and what's been a very entertaining first half these two teams playing as hard as you can ask teams to play 
With a lot at stake for both Alabama State trying to remain in that top four in the SWAC to hang on to hosting a first round game. Prairie View with a victory wraps up the regular season title for head coach Byron Smith if you're looking at right there. You know, Coach Smith, one thing about his team, you know, he talked to them earlier in the week about they're used to being the hunter and now how are you going to respond that we, now we are the hunted. You know, one way that they do that, they play hard, man. I mean, they, they go at each other as hard in practice as they, as they go after the opposition in the games. So you see the standings at the moment, Prairie View and Texas Southern, they're going to be hosting first-round games. Alabama State and Arkansas Pine Bluff are have the advantage over Grambling and Jackson State to host the first round, but you still want to make sure you take care of business and don't leave anything up to chance. The top eight will make it. And so Southern with that one game advantage over AM and the Delta Devils to make the cut for the SWAC tournament. It's a lot still to be played for. I mean, everyone this time of year, we're going to talk about Champ Week. We're going to talk about the NCAA tournament, NIT tournament, you know, postseason play. But there's so many teams like these teams across the country that still are playing for a lot. This is just, this, I mean, this is a fun time of year as we lead up to March Madness. Oh, break into the rim, using that rim as a shield, and there's the offense on the scoring end for Reginald G. He's got six. Big body, once he gets going downhill like that, it's hard to stop him. Showing the dexterity, though, with the nice little reverse, though. That pass was swatted away by Ed Jones. And it will belong to Prairie View A&M. Substitution coming in. Lister is back in. And Ellis will check out. Again, fouls have accumulated. 25 of them, I think, so far. So coaches are looking for whatever combinations they can find. 28 fouls. Thank you for that. It almost feels like, and, and I could be wrong right here, but it feels like Coach Smith is going with little offense-defense substitutions. You know, try to get, when they're on offense, if there's a dead ball, get a better offensive unit in. If they're on defense, get a better defensive unit. Free ball. In and out. Looks good for Say, but didn't happen. Rejection! by Austin Rogers. We'll see if Alabama State can bounce back with that. Oh, seal! Nice. Wow! Both, both teams, the activity is great. Dennis Jones with the quick hands and the lay-in. <laughs> Let's get up and down and have some fun. And both teams can't get frustrated. All of a sudden, you think you have an easy layup, there's a steal. It happened at both ends. Now you still have to execute. Look at him trying to get Ross the ball right here. That's going to be out of bounds. We'll be knocked out by Prairie View. They only have six seconds to shoot, do the Hornets. Penetrate. I think I have an easy basket. Oh, no. Great hustle. Let's take off down the other way. I think I have an easy basket. Active hands. Both of these teams are playing hard at the defensive end. Four blocks already tonight by Alabama State. You can see the turnover margin for Prairie View A&M. They're one of the best in the nation. We've got two bodies on the floor, and the Prairie View bench is applauding. They're going to get this call in their favor, an offensive foul. Saturday is the final weekend of the regular season. Of course, you got to have Duke and North Carolina, right? 6 o'clock Eastern. That's pretty good. And we're going to back it up with Michigan, Michigan State. Both games are streaming live on the ESPN app so you can watch anywhere. Is the big fella coming back? Is Zion coming back? What do you, you know, think? I don't know. He's got to, right? He, he, he should be ready for North Carolina. Now, Coach K said he's going to make sure he's 100% healthy, which is the right thing before he gets him in there. The kid's probably itching to play. No doubt about that. There's a three ball hit. That's going to be a long two now for Lister, we're told. That's going to be a two-pointer under two minutes to go. You know, and you see why Prairie View is so good. I mean, Alabama State has played well this half. They've had stretches. Prairie View's just been consistent. And you look up, and all of a sudden, with a minute 45, 
the 10 point game. Yeah, Alabama State has had some short runs, but they can never get really close. I think the closest they've got was six. That is going to be ruled an over and back violation in Alabama State. One other problem for Alabama State here, John, is their three-point shooting is way off. They make a little over seven a game, and they have only made one and have missed nine in this half. And that, their big guns, Ross and G, haven't gotten in the flow offensively. Well, that's an air ball. So the shot clock doesn't reset, and it's going to end up going in the hands of Alabama State, despite the extra effort by Prairie View. Say. He'll draw a contact. Looks like Johnson might be the guilty party. Nice aggressive move by the freshman Say right there. He took it right to the rim, made the officials make the call. So here is a freshman from Prattville, Alabama. And he can't get that free throw to fall. He's only had three free throw attempts all year. This is one of those games where because of the accumulation of foul, there might be a guy off the bench you're not expecting. It could be the, the secret hero of this game. That's a good call right there. We'll see because the fouls are accumulating. And as I said, it's not going to stop. So we'll see what the last five minutes of this game looks like and who's going to be on the court. It's going to take us a while to go through <laughs> the stat sheet at halftime. We've had 30 whistles, 30 fouls in this game. And I don't even think the officials are overreaching their authority. There's just been a ton of contact in this game. Yeah, they're not calling it close. I mean, every every call has been an obvious, easy call. Oh, the no-look pass contested at the rim, of course. And Patterson will be going to the line. I'll tell you what, we talk about how the zone has slowed Prairie View down. Mr. Jones is really picking it apart lately. Look at that pass. Free throw is good. Lead back up to nine. Then you got Patterson, the energizer bunny, as I'll call him. He just keep going and going and going, sliding along that baseline, making himself available, which is underappreciated. As, as, as Jones is looking for someone, Patterson's finding the gaps down there. He's not just watching the game. He's playing the game. So a couple of free throws for Patterson to build it back up the double-digit lead. By the way, that foul on Brandon Johnson is third. So you've got Pichardo and Johnson, two big men for the Hornets, both now hit with three fouls. A little flex action here. Ross coming off the down screen. Great deny right there, making catches a foot further out than he wanted to. Just inside the three-point line, that's no good. And that's a tough call to figure out whose ball is it. And it's going to be Alabama State's ball with 27.6 to go. So the shot clock will be off. Uh, that's what I'll say to that. Uh, Looks like it might have been off the of state to me. Doubleheader starting in Chicago, 76ers and the Bulls. Then let's go to the Staples Center, the Lakers and the Nuggets. Our coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN and, of course, on the ESPN app. Never has a team that's out of the playoff race received more media coverage than the Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even in the top eight at the moment. LeBron James. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. And I'm going to predict the upset win. Really? Over I Denver? Am. I am. Denver's awfully solid. We'll see. They're more than solid. <laughs> <laughs> the Hornets hold it for one shot right here. The guy they went with the ball has it. That's Ross. Plays off the screen. Fires. Three ball! And he nailed it! That will not count, and it almost went in. So a huge shot there by Jacoby Ross, the sophomore from New Orleans. It's senior night here in Montgomery, and senior Fausto Pichardo filling up the stat sheet. But unfortunately, he's also filled it up with three fouls. Halftime coming up. Kevin Connors and the guys in the studio when we come back.
we are at the half here on Big Monday with Prairie View A&M having led all the way in this exciting matchup against Alabama State. It's been pure entertainment, and we can't wait for the second half. Well, what is all the hype about? Well, it's about what's available on ESPN Plus with college basketball, UFC, thousands of live events. You can watch 30 original programming, 30 for 30. You get the whole library there. You can start a seven-day free trial. Download the ESPN app or just visit ESPN.com. We'll step aside and get John's thoughts on what's been a frantic first half. underway here on the campus of Alabama State in Montgomery, Alabama with John Thompson III. I'm Dave Lamont and we thank you for joining us in what's been a highly entertaining game. 31 fouls called in that first half so we're going to see a, a half John coming up here where attrition could really be a factor. No it's really going to be interesting to see how both coaches manage that because you know the guys are playing hard they're going after each other when you play hard when you play at a fast pace you're going to pick up fouls and I don't anticipate either team backing off from that game plan. No, clearly not. And the energy in this game has been there from the very, very beginning. And the guy who's really driven the bus so far for the Panthers has been Gary Blackston. And that's not a surprise. He's been, for the most part, driving the bus for them all year. He's done a very good job of, of managing the game, managing the offense. You know, he's scored his points. He's set his teammates up. He's provided an energy spark that he, that he, that he always does. And the same can be said for the senior Fausto Pichardo on his senior night. Seven points, three blocks for Pichardo, but unfortunately, three fouls. Yeah, well, you know what? For Prairie View, they've come to expect that from Blackston. For Alabama State, Pichardo's in uncharted waters right here with, the, with what he's doing. And he has done everything tonight, as Sean pointed out in the first half. Pichardo even helped mop the floor at one point. You see Blackston tonight. So you've got Johnson and Pichardo with three fouls, and they are both for Alabama State. Otherwise, you have six players with two fouls on both teams. Well, actually, four for Alabama State and six for Prairie View. So keep an eye on the foul totals as we begin half number two here in Montgomery. And I think a key for, for Alabama State is if they can get Jacoby Ross involved. Uh, 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 Prairie View is doing a good job of just trying to deny him the ball. He's had very few touches, not just the score, but his touches at all. And somebody else for Prairie View that's got to get going if they want to pull away here. If they can, is Gerard Andrews who's had a very quiet first half. Hasn't played a lot, but he is a ten and a half point per game score. This is Holston. And let's start things over again. Alabama State has not led in this game at all. They got as close as six and has been as far down as 13. In the second part of the second half, the first half rather, Alabama State's zone was effective against Prairie View. Now they kept they kept giving it right back to him, turning yeah. the ball over with 11 turnovers for the half. Blackston shaken up on the play, and now we have another player injured sitting on the bench. I'm wondering if Devontae Patterson was just hit by the basketball that was knocked away. But watch what happens here. This to show you the energy of this game. You had Prairie View players knocking each other to the floor. They're going for it. The hustle right there. And then, oh, I see. No, Patterson yeah. got hip checked. Yeah, Patterson got hip checked on, uh, with the scoreboard. Andrews, he's okay. I, I, he's okay. Both of them are okay. Well, it's Blackston that they have to be a little bit worried about because he is trying to walk this one off a little bit. And we just pointed out what a key player he was for Prairie View A&M. And Patterson is going to leave. You got a trainer working with him. And so a substitution. And now Blackston, he just doesn't seem quite right. He doesn't. He doesn't. So Darius Williams will come in for him. That could be a big moment in this game if he is shaken up and not able to return. Shot clock violation. You know, we, we, that, that could be a key injury. As we said, as we said over and over again, I mean, Prairie View is playing for the regular season title here right now. And so I'm, I'm sure if Mr. Blackson, is, if he's not too serious, he'll be back. 
Well, Patterson is quickly back into the game. And that, by the way, was the 12th Alabama State turnover. So there's a couple of stats that jumped out at us, and that was one of them. And the points off turnover is 10 to 2, 13 to 2, as Williams comes off the bench and buries it. With another dime, pretty cross court skip pass by Dennis Jones right there. So Williams off the bench with 10. Here's Pichardo. Playing with those three fouls. That's a tough shot. And rebound for Prairie View. Pichardo's got to be careful there. I don't think he can, meaning <laughs> I don't think he's built to be careful. He's going to go all out. Another three ball for Williams. Timeout, Alabama State. Back-to-back -back Jack. And the lead is 13 for the Panthers. Comes off the bench and buries it. With another dime, pretty cross court skip pass by Dennis Jones right there. So Williams off the bench with 10. Here's Pichardo. Playing with those three fouls. That's a tough shot. And rebound for Prairie View. Pichardo's got to be careful there. I don't think he can, meaning I don't think he's built to be careful. He's going to go all out. Another three ball for Williams. Timeout, Alabama State. Back-to-back -back Jack. And the lead is 13 for the Panthers. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. A little bit of downtown Montgomery. Take a look at Darius Williams here, John, whose average on the year is about nine a game. He has 13 tonight, including three of five from three, and the last two back to back. And, and he's one of the reasons, and, and just that setup right there is why Prairie View is 14 and one. On any given night, they have multiple people that can step up and produce offensively, and then collectively, they're going to be there every night at the defensive end. And he did not start the game, so he's come off the bench for Byron Smith and played beautifully. Almost another turnover against the Hornets, and it's going to be anyway. It's going to be an offensive foul. They're tenacious. I mean, they're tenacious. They're going to stay with it. They have a stick to itiveness about them. Well, that's going to be three on Toby Iwosho. He joins the list with Pichardo and Brandon Johnson of uh, Hornets with three fouls. Now, in the second half, John, what was your what's your rule on playing with three fouls? Well, I mean, the, 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 the game's slowly getting away from them. At some point, you're going to, well, you're going to save the fouls and end up being down 20 or 25. You've got to play them, I think. You know, I think it's a feel. I don't think it's necessarily to go to a rule. Mm -hmm. This is a huge game for them. And you have to trust your guys. Correct. Two on the shot clock, and everything is going the Panthers' way. Dennis Jones has 10 points now, and this is the largest lead for Prairie View a and They've had an explosive start to this half. And they have a little bounce in their, a little pep in their step. They're feeling good right there. Well, they should. G now on the drive, and he'll draw a whistle. Mr. Jones has some pretty good assists right here. He says, okay, let me see if I can get one myself. Holds that follow through, looks over to the bench. And then what I like, you don't see it in that clip, but then he comes down the other end and really defends. Lister hit with that foul. We'll take a good look here at the junior. Reginald G, over 1,000 points in his career as a Hornet. And he has seven tonight. And four assists. Holston will check out, and Leon Daniels comes back into the game. Coach Jackson is over there. The, the energy seems to be sapping a little bit with the Alabama State team. He's over there trying to get his guys. Pick it up. Come on, guys. Well, the crowd's gone quiet. 
The band is not here tonight, by the way. That also does not help. As another great pass, and there's Gerard Andrews getting in the scoring column for the first time tonight. The band is in Mobile, Alabama, performing there. So you don't have that noise you would normally get. And let me just say, great game, two great programs, two great coaches. I, I was really disappointed when I heard the band was <laughs> in Mobile. They're, they're a Mardi Gras celebration. Yes, they are. I was here last year, and I remember that band. And the whole pregame, I kept wondering, okay, when's the band coming? When's the band coming? When's the band coming? Well, that is a difficult shot by Dennis Jones. Yeah, it looks like the ball was inadvertently knocked almost all the way to half court. We inbounded here by Alabama State, trailing by 18. And you see the numbers right there as far as the shooting goes. Prairie View hasn't missed, and the Hornets haven't made one. And they have to pick up their energy. They have to find a way. They're, they're really getting a little stagnant right here, Alabama State. That'll be the third foul on Antoine Lister, and he's going to come out of the game, and that's going to be the return of Gary Blackston. That's great news for Byron Smith and all the Prairie View fans. Yeah, this is too big a game. You knew he wasn't going to sit over there for too long. Nearly a steal. No, this, this Prairie View team is all over the court right now. Chardo in trouble. Double team for a moment. You got three to shoot. You got two to shoot. And a rebound going to Prairie View. And everything is going in their favor. And it's all, they're making everything go in their favor. The energy that they have on, at the defensive end, the communication that they have with each other at the defensive end is outstanding. Try to get it to Andrews. He gets it back. Pull up. Six out of six. And Darius Williams continues to shoot it like a madman. He's got 15. <laughs> Let me tell you, these th th these aren't easy shots. This six out of six, four of them have been tough contested shots that go in. Largest lead now for Prairie View. Williams has just been gigantic in this half, just brilliant. And almost a steal by Williams, but looks like he got a little bit of body as well as the basketball. Darius Williams, the junior from Augusta, has been a spark plug on that 15-2 run. Stroke, brawn, designed for what matters. View John is getting a huge boost off the bench from Darius Williams. They are the young man, the junior from Augusta, has come to play. He's got 15 points. He comes into the game averaging just under 9, 8.9. We see him putting on a show here today. And it's one of the things, as we inch towards March, why this team is so dangerous. They're balanced. They're balanced. They're an older team. They have multiple guys that can step up and score. Tonight is his night. And they all understand that. There's no tension over there. They all seem to have a oneness about their mission. They're playing with one accord in, in, in terms of, hey, we want to – win this regular season title, then we want to win the tournament. We want to go back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1998, I believe. Well, something else we've talked about repeatedly, John, has been the, the importance of this game and all the games now as we wind down. You mentioned March Madness coming up. We've already had a final in the SWAC tonight. Pine Bluff has lost to Jackson State 57-56, further tightening that center of the swack as far as who's going to be hosting and who's not going to be hosting. Jackson State now goes to 8-8. Eight and eight, And Pine Bluff, 9-8. and eight. And you've got Alabama State in trouble here. If they drop to 9-7, and seven, you've got Grambling State playing tonight at Mississippi Valley State. And it looks good for Grambling, up 10 with two to go. And guess who Alabama State plays next? Grambling. Grambling. That's a big one right there. That's huge. They all are big, and the coaches know it. Yep. The players know it. This is why you play. To get to this point, you're playing meaningful games. Every game means something. Daniels, 4-3. Will that be the shot that gets it started here for the Hornets? Because this has frankly gotten so quiet in here, we can hear the sneakers. 17-point game, 14 minutes left. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. 
There's also plenty of time for Darius Williams to continue to nail shots. Keep going, baby. You know, see, that's what I was talking about with they're in one accord. His teammates know he's hot. So they're getting him the ball. They aren't thinking, oh, he scored six points. Now it's my turn. No, let's find the man that's hot. Very unselfish play right there. And so back and forth we go. Leon Daniels with another corner three. Okay, okay. Now if they can get a stop down here. Well, they're going to draw a foul instead. Devontae Patterson takes a tumble, and foul will go against Alabama State. And Pichardo's already heading to the bench. That's his fourth. He's taking himself out of the game. Well, why, why, why delay? Why delay? <laughs> You know what Alabama State can't do? They hit two threes in a row. Daniels bangs the three out of the corner, and then in two seconds, Prairie View's flying down the court. Patterson's getting a shot at the rim. Their transition, their conversion from offense, we're excited because you made the shot. The defense has to be better. Patterson was trying to follow that shot, wish that shot in on the free throw. We have Duke and Wake Forest tipping off our final regular season Super Tuesday doubleheader at 7 p.m. Eastern. It'll be followed by Kentucky and Ole Miss. It was a bad Saturday for Kentucky. We'll see how they rebound. Both games are on ESPN and the ESPN app. You can watch them anywhere. Ellis smack into the game for Prairie View A&M. You see Coach Jackson over there hugging the move, move, move. G's been uber aggressive when he gets the ball. You see on your screen, the Alabama State foul trouble. Pichardo with four and two others with three. Here's a three in the air. That's not going to work. And the rebound knocked away from Gary Blackston. Out of bounds off the Hornets. Yeah, but I like I like Daniel's effort right there. I mean, if State's going to make a if Alabama State's going to make a run at it, they're going to have to score off of turnovers. They're going to have to get second shots. They're not going to be able to just come down the court and run their half court offense and catch up. They got to turn up the energy a little bit. Score in different ways. And I like the way that Daniels went after that ball right there. Daniels had to hit a couple in a row there, John. Their three-point percentage would even be worse. Right now it's four of 18. It's basically 22.2%. But basically it is. Coming off the screen, Williams. Doesn't see much post play. And to the line, Patterson will have a chance at a three-point play. It is on. Uh, Prairie View just continues to make the right decisions. Patterson heard you talk about the post play. Throw it in. Takes his time down there. Takes a nice patience down there. Gives a little pump fake. Gets to the line and the end one. First on Austin Rogers. Well, he goes through the whole the, the whole routine to let you know. <laughs> uh, at least he appreciates his strength. <laughs> I appreciate his hustle. Been a lot of that this evening. Both teams, nobody will accuse either of these teams of not playing all out. They certainly have an opportunity to foul line coming up for Leon Daniels, a junior from Atlantic City. And you can see the little frustration on the part of Iwan Ellis. That's three on him. And, and Ellis, he's frustrated because he gets in the game and within a minute he picks up a foul. He comes in, he hadn't even really broken a sweat yet. Daniels with 13 points. And right back to the bench he goes. Nope, he won't get a chance to break a sweat. Incredible athlete Ellis is. He's doing some stuff in, in practice that very few people can do. And that's what I said in the opening. Mean, if, they, if they make it to the tournament, right. they have the athleticism that a lot of smaller conference teams don't have to match up if they play, when they play, a much higher seed. It'll be interesting to see if they're forced into the play-in game. They see that they can. That pass for Patterson was deflected, and he'll flush it down anyway as Prairie View trying to wrap up the SWAC regular season title and nail down that number one seed for the tournament. Rebound missed. Excuse me, the rebound gathered after the miss. And Alabama State, it's looking a little grim for them at the moment. If they can't rebound here, that fourth and fifth position in the conference, and third for that matter, and sixth, all up for grabs in the final weekend. And then you see right now, Coach Smith is content to burn the clock, 
and then try to score when this clock gets under nine. They're holding the ball. ball. Yeah, I thought there was a little contact there. And I tell you what, that's great coaching by coach because they've been successful every time. First time Patterson gets it, they come down the court. This time, Blackerson gets fouled, and he's burning some clock. Great coaching move. Been a tough night, John, for Alabama State. It has, and a, a large part of it has been because of Prairie View's game plan and execution against Jacoby Walsh. They want to deny him, switch out on everything, make everything hard for him. That possession right there, you see he's got a 6'7", six, 6'8", six, Ellis on him, but they made everything difficult for him. Last year's SWAC Rookie of the Year, and they're just making everything hard for him. He's been a non-factor in this game, and, and, and Alabama State can't win if he's a non-factor. Missed eight shots. You see right there, one of nine, three points, four rebounds. And at the moment he is on the bench, we have three foul shots coming up for Gary Blackston. The first one did not go. Now, I just expressed how Ross's ineffectiveness tonight has been a big key. Now, the other thing is when you start the second half, then Prairie View has not missed a <laughs> shot from the field this half. They're 10 for 10. And that includes field. four That's threes. It. Four <laughs> for four from threes. And here's what's funny. Not not to Blackston, it's not funny. He only made one of those free throws. Right. So Prairie View, perfect here in Montgomery and Don Oliver. Oh, you see their little injury there. Unfortunately, that's a turnover on G, and I don't know what happened. I hope he just banged knees. I think he just banged knees with somebody. And that is painful. Here we have a stoppage for the moment. Take a look, see if uh, Dr. John here is correct. Yeah, it looked like they just banged knees right there. I tell you what, Prairie View can close that, that hole up a little bit because you know G's going to the basket. Yep. At this point, he's going he's to try to score every time he gets the ball. He is sitting on the bench, but he looks like he's okay. The trainer walked away, so hopefully he'll be back in very shortly here for the Hornets. And you see there were several possessions where Prairie View just ran the clock down and then tried to attack late in the shot clock while Alabama State was in that zone. This possession, they come out back to man-to-man. -to -man. Does not matter. Hey, no, it doesn't. Does because. not matter. Blackson with the they're now five for five from three to pull up three as the shot clock's expiring. We're almost halfway through this half. They're eleven for eleven. You mentioned the five threes. Blackson now is over twenty points for the night. And a whistle on a foul against Prairie View A and M. Rarely, if ever, will you see any team at any level of basketball come out and shoot it like that for ten minutes. No, no, no. At any team, any level. And when you say any level, I'm thinking Pee Wee, oh, yeah, all those Pop kids. Warner, all the way up to the pros. My, my boys started playing when they were four years old, and they didn't go 10 for 10. 58% tonight for Prairie View A&M. And this is the same thing that hurt Alabama State in the first half. It was a slow start. They had a hard time putting the ball in the basket. They missed their first seven shots and fell behind. They have never had a lead in this game. And if they end up getting one, it's going to be pretty dramatic. It, it will be very dramatic. But one thing that's been impressive, and this may sound crazy, but Alabama State's defense has not been poor. Mm -hmm. Prairie View's making tough, long, contested shots. Well, they're going to go deep in the shot clock again. They might miss one here. Nope, you know what? That doesn't count. Traveling violation against Johnson, so they're still perfect from the field. Well, speaking of 11, Dennis Jones comes into the game. That's seven turnovers for Prairie View A&M. They've been shooting like mad during this win streak, by the way, 
That's a, even the chances around the basket are not falling for Alabama State. That was a effort by Holston. Now we're going to have a whistle here at half court and a foul on Holston. Yeah, Holston got the shot he wanted. The ball just didn't go in. Nice patience. They did a good job of swinging side to side, moving the defense, attacking on the swing. He got there and just missed. Three fouls on Holston, the native out of D.C. or D.C. native. Once again, you see Prairie View content to work it a little bit. Darius Williams, he shot it brilliantly. All right, I'm going to predict the miss on this possession. This okay. will be the first miss of the second half. Let's see how they do it. They go underneath. Now, again, they're going to preserve <laughs> their perfect record by getting another turnover. And, and a little bit of acting there by Holston. But a very good defensive play. Moved his feet, kept his arms up in the air, didn't swing down. Good defensive play right there. Well, he's given up some size, too, to Devontae Patterson, who's about six inches taller, about 25 pounds heavier. Almost a steal by Patterson. Open shot. Off the mark. Offensive rebound of the Hornets. Ross. Well, that was a smart play by Daniels. He didn't have the shot and ended up drawing the foul on Williams. It was. Very good play. And let's see. Show shot this? right there. Leans into him a little bit, but smart play. And it'll be three foul shots coming up. I'll tell you what, though. I guarantee you Coach Jackson is wondering what in the world was going through Iwoshi's mind taking that three right there. He's made 12 on the year, but that, his feet weren't set. He was moving. Fortunately, they got it back. He got the rebound back. He's the one that, that passed it to Daniels in the corner. Well, Daniels hits the first of a couple of foul shots. He's got one more, 64% shooter. He had 10.7 rebounds against Prairie View a and a junior college transfer from Tallahassee CC. Arizona, excuse me, Alabama State has shot very well from the foul line. 20 made free throws this evening. So that also tells you with 50 points that they're just not getting the field goals to go down. All right. We've gone 11 minutes plus without a miss for the Panthers in this half. And let me tell you, if, if we didn't have a shot clock, they would be in four corners right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Smith would be so proud. And they are 11 for 12. And that is a foul on the offensive rebound. The effort by Gerard Andrews will get him to the line. So it's going to go down in the annals as we record this game that Andrews missed the first shot of the second half with eight, right around 840 left in the half. So here are updated standings in the SWAC. Alabama State in some trouble here going to, it looks to be 9-7 and seven, unless they rally, and they are down by 21. Texas Southern, 13-3, and three, continuing to just win. So you've got Pine Bluff, Grambling, Jackson State, and Alabama State kind of all knotted together. Going to be really interesting to see how this all finishes out. There's a three ball for Iwosho. So, so, so is, the crowd has disappeared. It's quiet in here. He might have heard what I just said a few seconds ago. <laughs> He's going to prove you wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Coach, what would you just say? Take that. And that's not his game. No, that's and, the fourth one he's made this year. And you're right about this. This is actually the four corners. No, they're holding the ball. They're holding yeah. the ball. They, they look to score under nine. And just the physical nature of this game told in that collision right there between these two teams. Prairie View's Panthers closing in on the regular season title. Monday in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Some of the headlines here. Jeremy Combs added five steals to that double-double. Four straight SWAC Player of the Week. And Texas Southern wins again tonight. Ten straight.
And that all makes us think about the SWAC tournament semifinals and the championship coming up in two weeks, 15th and 16th from Birmingham, Alabama. And the men's championship game will be on ESPNU. And the ladies will be on ESPN3 on the 16th. I tell you what, I know a lot of other teams have a lot to say about it, but if it ends up being Prairie View and Texas Southern in the championship game, that's must-see TV. I mean, two teams that are playing very well. As, as we've said, Texas Southern, every year they get the ball rolling as the year goes on. You know, they're much better at the end of the year than they are at the beginning of the year, and this year is no different. Coach Jones has them has them rolling down there, and so it's, we have two freight trains heading towards each other right now. Well, you mentioned the danger that Prairie View could pose for a team in the NCAA tournament should they get there. You talk, One of the things you mentioned tonight was balance. They've got four players in double figures, 18 down to 12, and they have used that balance approach tonight. Their leading scorer for the evening, Darius Williams, has come off the bench to be their leading scorer with 18. You see Devontae Patterson there with 13. And you mentioned experience, athleticism, and defense as what may make the Panthers a tough out. And you see it all on display here. You see it all on display here tonight. And they, they just want to win. I mean, they, they, have, they, they, they just want to win. A lot of teams say that. A lot of players say that. But, you know, if they don't have the co cohesion. You see, with this group, everything they do, every drill in practice, every drill and shoot around, the attentiveness, that they want to win. And you see it on display. They don't care who scores the points. We just want to win. So back to the line will go Leon Daniels, a junior from Atlantic City. He's having a nice night, 17 points. Glad to see Reginald G back in after he bumped knees and had to sit out for a little while, let that thing cool down a little bit. Brown of the one and one is missed. Rebound to Prairie View. Some pesky defense being played by Jacoby Ross against Dennis Jones. Jones just bleeding clock here. That's been the strategy for Byron Smith for most of this half once his team established that big lead. No, they actually started with about 14 minutes to go. And he's just playing the odds. We, we're, gonna, you're not, we're not gonna give Alabama State enough possessions mm -hmm. to come back and win this game. But, and all the while, they're scoring. It's not like they have stopped scoring. They're still scoring. Iwosho hit with his fourth foul. Patterson at the line. Tonight after Texas and Texas Tech, Sports Center with Steve Levy and John Anderson. And we have LeBron less than 40 points and passing Michael Jordan. What does that mean to the King? Plus, what is behind Trey Young's surge? And Todd McShay and Lewis Riddick's biggest takeaways on the final day of the Combine. Sports Center, 11 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. You know, and you see, they're, they're a good thing, not, and not to write off this game with almost seven minutes to go, you know, but this Alabama State team has a bright future. You know, it's, it's one of the things where freshmen and sophomores become juniors, become sophomores and juniors. And you see the growth in this team from last year to this year. Well, they were eighth last year. Currently, they sit in third place. Today's game may change that to fourth. But you see the development that Coach Jackson's, Coach Lewis Jackson's team has made from last year to this year. And you just see that this, this is – in spite of tonight's score, this is a good program, not just a good team. Well, Lewis Jackson's a proven winner. And patience here. He's been here a long time. What a, what a shot. They just they just cannot miss. They just cannot miss. And another tough shot. I, I mean, know. they're not getting easy layups. They're making tough shots. 12 out of 13. Gee. Showing what he's made of. G's going to keep coming. Yep. Score doesn't matter. He's a warrior. He's just going to keep coming at you and keep coming at you. That's four on Lister. Holston will come back in for Alabama State. 6.03 left in this one. Alabama State, 8 and 2 at home coming into the night, but they have never had a lead. Before the night's over, we're going to be. 50 or 60 foul shots. 
We had 31 fouls in the first half. And, but again, we talked about it off the air as well. It just reflected the physical nature of the game. This wasn't one of these games where the officials were out to prove a point. By the way, this is the last home game for Alabama State. So you saw their road record needs a little improvement. They've got to go to Grambling and then Jackson State to finish out the season. And those are two teams that are going to be hungry because they are 8-8 eight and eight in conference play. And Alabama State's going to drop the 9-7. and seven. And, John, we've had 53 free throws. So I think your number is okay. going to hold up. I think I like your chances. That's pretty good, pretty good on my part, huh? Yep. 49 fouls. And that's what we've done. We have 18 in this half. And we have a turnover here. You this talk is about a, those other two teams. Sorry. No, oh, are, are hungry. Oh, yeah. This Alabama State team is going to be hungry also. They're going to bounce back. They've got some fight in them. Well, that this game Prairie View Grambling. team is better. Yeah. Oh, no, no question. I'd say, that, I'd say that game at Grambling has a lot of weight to it all of a sudden. The way this has turned out for Alabama State. A whole lot of weight. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be gigantic. Grambling has a shot to move up. Coach Jackson had the boys ready. Jacoby Ross will bounce back. G will be G. That was another difficult shot and a rare miss. And then that's more like it. Devontae Patterson on the offensive glass. The interesting thing also is Alabama State came in as the most, as the best offensive rebounding team in the conference. And they've had a tough time dealing with Prairie View on the glass tonight. Blackston again. There's that great speed. And even that shot goes in. <laughs> There's nothing you can do at this point. Coach, Coach Jackson takes a 30. I mean, with the CB, creates a turnover, good defense, swarming defense. And this guy gets from one end of the court to the other as fast as most people in the country. That's that athleticism on display. Man, he is something to watch in person. 16 points for him. So some headlines around the nation. And we talked about this earlier, how UCF got the big win in Houston, snapping what was the longest active in Division One, Jim Delaney has been a very important part of the college sports scene as the commissioner of the Big Ten is going to retire in June 2020. And number one in the country, John, remains Gonzaga. You know, out of, out of those three bullet points, the one in the middle jumps out at me. Jim Delaney, I mean, that's a huge void that's going to be left. I mean, he's been one of the most influential people in our game for decades now, and, and having him step down as a void is going to be missed. I'm sure he's still going to hang around once he does step down and, and still have a major impact. That's a tricky shot in traffic for Alabama State. Well, I've already read an article, and there's going to be more speculation that Jim De uh, Delaney stepping aside. He has not been a proponent of expanding the college football playoff. Will that change if you bring in a commissioner who might feel differently about that down the road? Just something to think about. No, him leaving are going to have far and wide ramifications on our, on our on the college world, football, basketball, the college world. Guess what? He just made another one. Did you bring your umbrella? <laughs> Unconscious shooting. They've missed two shots in the entire half. They've made every three. They're six for six, and oh, Alabama me. State. A little bit too little too late, but still, Jacoby Ross gets in there with a three-pointer. And, you know, Coach Smith's a little upset about that. They relaxed a little bit. They've done a great job on Ross. They relaxed a little bit. Almost a turnover. This has to go in. Come on. Come yeah, on, man. It has to go in. This is, this is crazy. You can't do anything. <laughs> seven for seven this for one, three. <laughs> I mean, the ball bounces to him. It's good defense. It's, it's not poor defense. Stay right here. Stay right here. Stay right here. Stay right here. Well, this is, I promise you, is not something that happened earlier in the first half. It is lather, rinse, repeat. Another three for Prairie View A&M as they're running away. Michigan State at 8, Saturday on ESPN. That's a giant size doubleheader for you. This is going to be basketball from noon all the way through on ESPN with John Thompson the third, Dave Lamont. John, been around the game your entire life. Have you seen teams shoot like this ever before? 
I think of Villanova in the, in the championship game. That's a good point. Against Georgetown. <laughs> I didn't want to bring that one up. <laughs> you know, and right now, Prairie View is shooting 60% yep. for the game. And, and it's, it's, what's amazing is they're averaging 72.3 points for the year, for the game. There's 338 left. They have 88 points. And most of the second half, they've been milking the clock. It's yeah. not like they're flying up and down the court, and this is a track meet. Since about the 14-minute mark, Coach Smith has had his guys hold the ball, milk the clock, and they aren't attempting to score until under nine seconds. They're making every shot they take. I mean, there aren't too many games we see a coach with over 10 minutes left in the half hold the ball and get put up 88 points. Seven of seven from three, and I expected that shot to go in had they taken it. And another bucket for Prairie View a and There's got to be something that if they get to 100, we get free pizza or something, even though they're the road team. Maybe in, in Prairie View they'll have a night for that. Maybe they have something to watch the SWAC tournament. Well, that would be nice. If they shoot that well in the SWAC tournament, they'll, they'll move on. You know, and if they move on, I, I meant to bring this up earlier. I, I know that the committee, they have a method to their madness when it comes to seeding and, and games. You know, last year you had uh, uh, the SWAC champion going against the MEAC champion. And, you know, I, I just wish they could construct it another way so one wouldn't have to knock out the other. Agreed. I'm actually, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of the extra four. I think if you win your conference, you should just go right in. You shouldn't have to play in. And yes, you're going to get a number one seed some, if you're a SWAC or a MEAC team, but we now have finally seen a 16 beat a one. I don't know why you feel like that, that the committee feels like you've got to earn your way in when you already have earned it. No, and that's a good point. I mean, because those other spots aren't necessarily by, you know, North Carolina Central, the MEAC champion last year, or Texas Southern, the SWAC champion, but it's, it's, the, the additional team from the Power Five conference that's getting those other bids. Yeah, and those are teams, and this, this, this does drive me a little crazy. These are teams that sometimes have sub-500 conference records. And there ought to be an emphasis placed on winning. I, I think so, too. I think so, too. And you, and, you, and you look at some of these teams, and you just wonder. You look at Joe Lenardi, and just who's still on the bubble, who has a chance. And you look at the record, and you look at what they've done, and you wonder how is this possible. I, I, I'm with you all the way, and and I don't think it's going to change. And it, I don't know whether they – I would like to think they're not thinking about ratings or names because this tournament kind of takes care of itself. It doesn't – Sometimes it doesn't even matter who's in it because people are going to watch and you're going to bring in the casual sports fan. And in some cases, they're actually rooting for the smaller schools to see upsets. And that's what gets the country turned on when you have those upsets. And I'm going to say, whoever the SWAC champion is, especially if it's Prairie View or Texas Southern, they're built to have a win. They're built to win in the NCAA. Both of them are veteran teams. Both of them are athletic. Both of them are extremely well coached. And you have to love what Coach Smith is doing at Prairie View with the program that he's building. Not just a good team, but he's putting the pieces together so this is going to be sustainable. And this is going to be a swack clinching win. And the regular season title will go to Texas this year. Prairie View's Panthers are going to do it. Of course, he's been residing in Texas quite a bit lately with the success that Texas Southern has had. It's a season high for Prairie View. And they still can't miss. No, they've had a couple little misses, but. But they're literally a couple. I mean, yeah, that's, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's unbelievable what we've seen here tonight. They've missed four shots, and the last two that they missed have no impact on the game. Timeout called by Alabama State with 65 seconds to go after the Daniels three. And this is what the game has been like, John, for Prairie View in this half. Tell you what, when you got guys that are putting the ball in the basket, like the Panthers have this second half, you sit back and say, "Wow, I'm a pretty good offensive coach." <laughs> you know, your, your, your team shoots 19 for 23. A lot of them difficult shots. You know, it doesn't matter what you're running. When the ball goes in the basket, the offense looks great. And I tell you what, the Prairie View offense looks great tonight. 
and you see the numbers in the half. Alabama State's taken only three fewer shots. They've made 12 fewer shots. And Prairie View normally shoots 46% as a team tonight. They're at 60. So let's take a look at some headlines around HBCU. Virginia State defeats Shaw on Saturday to win the CIAA. Miles College won the SIAC title on Saturday. And that won a tremendous turnaround from season to season for Miles. Our congratulations to them. And from Hampton, Jermaine Merrill. Now, Hampton has moved into the Big South, and he is fifth in Division I in scoring this season. You know, the fun part of this time of year is, is not just, you know, the great games and wins and losses, but, but, but this graphic right here where you, you, you learn about different people, different teams across the country that aren't, aren't your usual suspects. You learn about great programs, great players, great traditions. That's the one of the beauties of this time of year. I believe we're going to have either a five-second call or a foul here. Going to be a foul on the inbound. Ball wasn't even thrown in, and we had contact. And Tayshawn Johnson has fouled out. And these are eight points. Committed to foul before the ball's even inbounded. 53rd foul of the evening. And they're going to the monitor here. Making sure that it is indeed a common foul or something worse. And they're going to hit him a flagrant one. We'll get the explanation on that. Oh, going to hook and hold, yep. That's what I thought they were looking for, and that's been the big call this year. Not a fan of the rule. Understand it. Thought it was an overreaction, in my view, anyway. And uh, But that's the call here, and that's going to be an opportunity for Leon Daniels to go to the line. Uh, you know what? I, I, I don't think I, – I disagree with you. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm, I can't say a fan of the rule, but I think it was needed because I think that that was just getting – excessive and we're going to get a second look right here and you see you see number one just just hook he hooked and held he did exactly by definition you know what what the rule is, is trying to stop and I, I think it's people were starting to coach that i just think it was getting out yeah. of hand is the penalty my think my argument might be john is the penalty seems to be too severe and that you're right i now will agree with you on that yeah you, yes i agree with that i mean it's a foul just I call think, it a foul exactly and let's move on start looking for it more calling it a foul oh they're looking it's a for common it. foul instead of <laughs> yeah. i agree with you. they right. are looking for it i think that's my complaint a foul is a foul i don't think you, i don't know the added weight and then of course we have monitor time now these guys figured that out very quickly which was lovely but anyway, once that genie's out of the bottle, it never gets put back in. And Holston will be hit with a foul here with 45.9 seconds to go. That'll be his fourth. And Holston's a little frustrated with the call because they're, they're still playing hard. Alabama State's still playing hard. They played through, through the entire 40 minutes. It's Darius Williams, who has a chance to reach 20 points tonight. He's got 19. And there's 20 for Darius Williams, a junior out of Augusta, Georgia, formerly from Paris Junior College. He has had a great night tonight, all off the bench. He might have gotten this thing started, really, in the second half for the Panthers. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Because this has been an absolute downhill snowball. And they will dribble this one out. No need to shoot anything else. Off the Tristan Wallace rebound. And Prairie View A&M has won the SWAC regular season championship. They've won six in a row. They're 15 and one. And the only team to have beaten them this season is Texas Southern, who finished second in conference play this year.
And those two teams may meet on ESPNU in Birmingham for the SWAC championship. Wouldn't that be special? Uh, I hope they do meet. You know, one thing that Coach Smith said this week is getting guys to exceed their own expectations has been one of his most rewarding things with this group. And he's pushed them, he's prodded them, and they're exceeding the expectations they had for themselves at the beginning of the Well, they can celebrate this one as they silence the crowd in a building that is tough to win in. Alabama State now 8-3 and three at home this season, and they are in a hand fight for the top four positions in this conference. For John Thompson the third, I'm Dave Lamont. Our final score for the final time, Prairie View wins this one 96-69. to We thank our crew, we thank you for watching, and we say good night from Montgomery, Alabama. Don't let money get between you and your...